Hi everyone. In this video, I will be exploring the use of the Profoto A1 as both an Air TTL remote and slave. I'll be using the A1 on a Nikon D5 alongside a Profoto B1 500 Air TTL unit and also with the Air TTL remote. The A1 is being marketed as smaller, lighter and easier to use for those that still consider the B-series lights big and bulky. Now this might be good, but I hope that it will provide a decent range of modifiers for the A1 series like they have with the B-series lights. Profoto also promises seamless integration of the A1 into the Air TTL system. Basically, plug and play. So let's test it. Now before I start using the A1 as an Air TTL remote, I'm just going to double check a couple of settings in the menus. So, down here, I'm just going to make sure that the Air TTL function is actually switched on on this flash. I'm going to assign it to channel 1 and I'm going to choose group E. I want this flash to be completely in a group of its own so that if I change any settings on it, it won't influence any of the other group settings and if I change any of the group settings down here, I don't want that to influence the settings on this flash. Now I'm also just going to double check that the B1 unit has got the right settings. So at the moment it's channel 1, but I want to assign this to group A, just to make things easier for myself to track changes down there. All right, so now it should work. This is the only setup you need to do. You just have to assign a group and a channel. So let's see if what happens. Wow, there we go. That was a real easy setup. To change the TTL compensation of the big light, simply click on the A group button right there. And now we can adjust it with the dial. And you can see on the B1 unit, we can actually see what the compensation is that we're dialing in. Now the same for manual mode. We can flick over to manual mode here on the side of the A1 unit. And then we can select our group. And we can dial up and down on the manual setting and you'll see the manual setting reflect on the display of the B1 unit. Now if no groups are selected down here, then whatever I change will only affect the A1 unit. So at the moment here, I'm only dialing in compensation for the A1 unit in TTL mode. You can also control the model lamp and switch units on and off from the A1. Select your group and just press model down there. So you see a little dot appeared showing me that the model lamp is at the moment on on this unit. Now if I long press a group, it will switch the head on and off. So there we go, it's off, long press it again switches it back on. Now what if I just want to use the A1 as a remote and I don't want it to actually fire during the exposure? That's easy, you just need to go into the menu and search for the function called head and just make sure that that is turned to off. So now it will still trigger the other lights but this unit will not flash during the exposure. Now one of the things that I love about this TTL system is that it shows us the power settings that was used for the last exposure. This is really great. It also stays there in temporary memory when I switch over to manual mode. So now, instead of spending a lot of time on set trying to get the right measurements, you can just set, set it to TTL, sort of get yourself in the ballpark, then switch to manual and do fine tweaks if you need to. Sync settings on a Nikon is controlled via the camera. As long as auto FP mode is activated in the menus, the A1 will automatically switch to high speed sync mode when the shutter speed goes over 250th of a second. To go into second curtain sync mode, we also have to use the flash menu on the Nikon and just make sure that it's set to rear sync. And then we can double check in the menu of the um, A1 and we'll see that now that's also set to second curtain sync. And the moment I dial the shutter speed over 250th of a second, it goes into high speed sync mode. Now let's test the A1 as a slave unit. I've got the Air TTL remote on the camera this time. And I would suggest that you just do a power cycle of your um, A1 with this remote switched on before you start using it as a slave. I just had some weird issues trying to sync it up when I just took it straight from the camera. Might have been my imagination, but still. All right, so before we start off, I just have to make sure that everything is in the same channel and I've got the right groups assigned. I'm going to the menu here. 
And I'm just going to make sure that this flash is now assigned to a group that I can control with this remote. And at the moment I've got it to group B. So, let's see if it triggers. Now TTL mode in this seems to work great. I can even dial in my compensations, but you'll see there if I select group A, I can see my compensation level that I'm dialing in on the display on this unit. But when I switch to group B and dial in compensations, it doesn't show on the rear display, but it does influence the setting. Test it in manual mode. So in manual mode, got group B selected. And now you'll see when I dial in any settings there, it reflects on the display on this side. I can also switch the modeling lamp on and off. Got group B selected. Model. And there we go. And you can switch the head off. All in all, the flash seems to integrate really well with the Air TTL system. It can be used as a remote or a slave unit, and I love using it in hand with the modeling light on and a remote on the camera. It's really fun and easy to see what the flash is going to do. So, should you get one? Well, it would be great for traveling light and shooting in cramped spaces. I mean, two or three of these units will easily fit in the same packing space as a B1X, and it's half the price. But it lacks the power and versatility of the B1X, especially when it comes to available modifiers, so it's a difficult choice there. As a remote control, it seems to work really good, and it has the bonus of acting as a nice fill light from the camera position. It does cost more than double what a remote will cost though, so I would say if you already own a B1, B1X or B2 unit or a system, or you plan to invest in some in the future, then this little A1 would be really worth it because it will supplement the system really well. I hope this video helped you guys a lot. See you next time.